Alright, we get a full red orb again, and this time it interacts with some covenants, letting you be pure red, magenta, or golden crispy to change the reward you get for winning. Mound makers get to be magenta, and their objective is to defeat a set number of phantoms or the host. What this does is let you feel like you won after the host has two blues show up on top of their summoned phantoms. So it's not really an upside, but hey, you're purple. Warriors of Sunlight had enough jolly cooperation, and decided to help invasions, and actually seemed to get put in worlds with other invaders more often than other covenants. I mostly think this is a straight upgrade to normal reds. Fingers of Rosaria, who, do who donate enough tongues, have the downside of rewarding Darkmoon Phantoms that manage to kill them with a double ear. But hey, you get a neat title on your invasion banner. Other than that, there's no point in equipping this covenant, because it's the same hue of red as when you invade, without a covenant that changes your hue. It also gives you the Pale Tongue reward, just like the other non-altering covenants. Watchdogs of Farron Covenant lets you get summoned to defend the Crucifixion Woods from people standing around looking to fight low-level players, and honestly, it's just not worth it unless you're willing to fight someone and their friend for three hours because the allied phantoms get parry one shot and everyone gets another heal. Aldrich Faithful Covenant lets you get someone to defend the area between Pontiff Sullivan and On Orlando. Again, most of the time you'll run into people standing around with a friend who you'll fight for three hours. But hey, it's at a higher level now and people are somewhat more competent. <laughs> Blue Sentinels and Blades of the Dark Moon serve the same purpose, with Blades of the Dark Moon just being better. Unless you like the uh, lighter blue of the Blue Sentinel. Both covenants search for worlds that have been invaded specifically by a red-eye orb invader, and only if the host has the Wave Blue Covenant equipped, which they can switch to at any moment. You do not get rewards for killing non-Red Orb Phantoms, such as Aldrich Phantoms, or White Sign Mound Makers. Of course, you can also use a Red Sign Soapstone to get summoned to fight people, and you'll get your Covenant color when applicable. There's also the Spears of the Church, which is actually pretty cool if you can get it to work, because when it does, because what it does is you'll get summoned as a boss that a player and their friends have to beat to progress in the ringed city. You can't heal with Estus, but there's painting guardians that can heal you a little. If they don't get destroyed and you have passive poise with homing soul mass spawning around you every now and then and an item that spawns a massive wall of spears to split people up. Remember to not lock on while using the item, or it just spawns one square instead of a whole wall. Lastly, the arena exists. And you can do duels, team battles, and free-for-alls. All you get is a shiny medal, but you can choose to have any phantom color in the arena, which is neat. There's also multiple maps, and you actually get two shiny medals for team fights and duels. So, typically, invasions end up with you fighting a bunch of phantoms if you can't take the host out really quickly. The host gets 30% more health for existing, and of course, twice as many heals. That's not the issue. If the host even kind of knows what they're doing, then they'll back away and wait for you to try to rush them before they start attacking, which wastes a lot of time so blues can show up or their friends can put their signs back down. Sometimes they'll use a seed of a tree of giants, but those got nerfed. They only last 45 seconds now, and you don't have an invasion timer like in Dark Souls 2. So just uh, lure an enemy over again. <laughs> you also can't stop the host from escaping to the boss bog like you used to be able to in all of the previous Souls games. 
except for blood. But on top of that, a lot of the boss fogs don't immediately initiate the boss fight, so the host could just hide behind it forever. Walnir. This game really made me feel like I had to be a merciless terminator who doesn't let emotions mess up my attacks as I destroyed phantoms and chased after a host. Remember that most weapons get two hit R1 combos, but it's actually more effective to only hit once and then use the stun time to set up a roll catch. Also, watch my Have a Little Faith video on how to optimize your healing options. It's it's very useful to just always be able to heal back up to full. Medium speed hyper armor weapons can also be difficult to deal with, again because hosts can play passively to better effect than invaders since blue phantoms will show up. This mostly involves great swords and hammers, but it gets really tricky when there's more than one person, and if one of them hits you, then you'll be stunned long enough for them both to get to the So you just don't get to swing. It's not your turn ever. Unless you have an even bigger weapon, which you probably won't. First thing is you need to have already been prepared to deal with whatever hazards might be in the area you invade. Fall damage. You need to be able to get the cat ring quickly. Poison or toxic? You should have blooming purple moss clumps in your bar. Six normal esters. One, Ashen Estus, for optimal restoration when you kill a phantom. Maybe. Five, Normal Estus. Two, Ashen Estus. If you have confidence that you'll benefit from using FP to heal with Med Heal, then you get two Normal and two Blue Flash from killing a blue phantom. Second is actually the first step once you've invaded. You need to figure out where the host is and how many people are in the world and what PvE is still alive, so you can try to fall back to them if you have to. Third is when you start trading blows with them, and you have to decide when you can pressure one player with roll catches, or bait them into a parry or trade to get them low. You won't be able to finish people all the time, since they have cover from allies, or your weapon can be reacted to when they're focused, so you'll have to back off the guy trying to get that one hit in. There's really nothing you can do against good players without something unreactable like two-handed curved sword, dagger, or explosive bolt crossbow. Okay, so we're in the Crucifixion Woods, the uh, low-level swamp, we're at level 35, just to say. There's a red phantom just standing there. We're gonna find out very soon that that's password summoned Red Phantom of the, who's a friend of the host. So I go out and I look for the host. The host is over here. I don't know why I know that. I think I saw the uh, health bar show up a moment ago. Or I was just going this way to see if they were there. Usually they're by the bonfires. They're around the same direction. See, we got a... The host is a dragon. The red showed up behind me. Dark Souls 3 backstab. You know, Dark Souls 1 has backstabs. They're instant, but Dark Souls 3, once the backstab hit reg, actually, like, procs, it's, uh, guaranteed. Doesn't matter which way you're facing. Once the animation has, uh, reached a certain point, doesn't matter. So uh, I guess I'm gonna have to fight this red now. So we're doing the usual playstyle and keeping a little bit of a distance. Now there's two of them attacking me. Because there's water on the ground, the lightning crossbow bolt will conduct electricity. And because there's no poise in this game, that will cause hit stun. The reason he's trying so hard to parry me 
is because if they can get a parry with their dagger equipped, it'll be a very close to a one-shot. It should be a one-shot, but it, I don't know if it's actually for them anymore. Because this guy switches through a whole lot of weapons, I don't think their build is very well optimized. So the blue came in, and they started attacking the red, which is beneficial for me. Good thing not to be red today. If I just healed out of that, I think I would have gotten backstabbed from them. So we got an ally now. Dark Souls 3 is crazy, you can get six people very quickly. Compared to all the other games, this one lets you get the most people very quickly. Of course, if you have a Dark Souls 1 Grave Lording. Gets people pretty quick. But they're all against you. Anyway, even though this guy is a dragon, because they're using an ultra great sword, they can poise through my stuff. They also have the Cestus equipped, which has perseverance, which essentially gives them infinite poise for like one and a half seconds. <laughs> that lightning splashed at the blue. So we're keeping our distance, and thankfully the other uh, watchdog. Invader is good enough to not have died yet. I'm trying to slow them down because they're trying to go and gank the other watchdog. Luckily, I seem to have stopped them for a moment. Unfortunately, they've gotten around a tree and I can't do anything about that. So during rolls, you actually have poise. So even though the lightning splash hit the red there, they still got stunned. Or they still didn't get stunned. I don't think the dragon would be able to do it, because they don't have any armor. They don't have any poison. You heard that frost proc. You know, I don't think it's that the watchdog is all that gr is good. I think it's that the red, and they're not that great. <laughs> they're like practicing. A lot of people feel like they can just use invaders as practice. I don't know. Like in a comfortable environment. And I guess, I guess you can, but still. It's gross. <laughs> the red just attacked the host for a moment there. That's funny. But don't you do that. Let's see. Backstabs. Once the animation starts, it's guaranteed. Doesn't matter which way you're facing. So the host has a spear now. Spears actually have a really good running attack. Anything with a really good running attack is really good. That's just... That's just how Dark Souls games are. So someone died. Yeah, it was the Blue Phantom. That's really good. Gives me uh, two heals back. I'm running over here. I don't know why. I was probably questioning whether or not I should get away from everything. Or just leave at this point. <laughs> There's still certain animations you can't backstab people out of. It's just like... There's not very many. <laughs> Roll catch. I think that the host is light rolling, but I don't know. I haven't seen enough. Makes it difficult to roll catch. If they are. So we just did... Somehow. A backstab cancel. A Dark Souls 1 backstab cancel right then. We somehow did that in Dark Souls 3. Which is kind of why I kept this clip. Just because of how shocking that was to me. Like, if you, you play that back, neither of us took damage. This is why you should watch my video about having a little faith. See how easy I just got all that health back? Because I found a lull in the combat and I decided, oh, my health is kind of low. Instead of using an Estus, I think I will switch this one ring and heal. Dark Souls 3, keep that spacing, keep that distance, never attack. Use a crossbow. Not so much the crossbow, but I think that crossbows are really nice. So I'm just letting them shoot at me. Because 
because the host was using explosive bolts. I think that the the other phantom also had some sort of healing miracle because I heard one in the distance. That's nice. That's good. Someone watched the video. They look pretty basic though. Look at that nameless knight armor and the uh, Irithyll straight sword. It works though. Nothing to complain about. It works. Just gotta switch to my setup. The halberd and the crossbow, which is funny. He's gonna do that again later, but you're not good. I don't know if you'll get to see it, because it's gonna be in super speed. Because this goes on for a very long time. And this red switches through a whole lot of different weapons. It's so nice having the safety of knowing a friend has your back, isn't it? I can't do that. The most I get is a random. <laughs> His friend just stabbed him in the back, though. He tried to Estus cancel right there, that's why he spun. There's another blue, they're attacking the red, isn't that so nice? Blues don't understand, or they do understand. The only way they get ears is by killing reds. So even if they did kill me, they wouldn't get anything for it. So the blue's attacking the red, because... Blue Phantom really wants that, uh... Dark Moon Blade, it's really the only reason to be a blue phantom, I would think. It's like, oh, I still have blue Estus. Unfortunately, my friend has died now. So we're getting close to the end of the, the part where I tell you about this. So, now it's a 2v1, and I really am not appreciating how it's going. And as you can see, just no matter how low I get them, it doesn't matter because they just restore all their health, we restore all our health, everyone fully heals, they're trying to one-shot me, I'm not letting them, because, and because they're trying to one-shot me, I have to be very careful. So I decide, okay, there's only one of me, I have the cat ring equipped, I'm going to try to bait them into falling. As much as I can, because they do actually find the angle right here to shoot me at. Which doesn't really matter, because I know the exact distance I can fall from without dying. <sighs> so now we just sit down here for a bit. I'm like, okay. I'll just be over here, and then the red comes down, and so we fight the red for a little bit longer. Can't parry that. Could parry the running attack. It's just parrying is difficult. Oh, but he switched to a weapon I'm way more familiar with. And they're using fun moves. So they get parried. Unfortunately, the host has come by. So there's no wake up that I can do. Especially when they use perseverance like that. So, yeah, that's invasions in Dark Souls 3. This goes on for another 40 minutes. We've got some big glitches in this game due to the bow glitch. But the most controversial one, for whatever reason, is the Estus Cancel. Estes Cancel allows a player to truly have an unpunishable heal in your face option, where normally you might get an R1 R1 punish if you've been spacing properly, which would make the heal far less effective. Personally, I'm against Estes Cancels because it invalidates my slow Terminator playstyle and encourages one shots or otherwise high damage. On top of that, there's also the ability to restore Estes Flasks with the Ash of War from the Pyromancer's Parting Flame, glitched with the Bow Glitch. Personally, the Bow Glitch isn't a big deal to me, but being able to restore all your heals like that makes it impossible to win against two players if you can't one-shot somebody, or get a chance to pressure them into a three-hit roll catch kill. Maybe four. Theoretically, you could heal up to full with regenerative effects, but the Estus refill speeds that way up, if you can get away long enough. There's also a few true three-hit combos, or six if you're using the, what are they called, the paired weapons? A few true three-hit combos with light attacks, weapon arts, light attack, and even some more powerful ones with DLC weapons, especially the Split Leaf Greatsword, which has a hard-to-do infinite combo. 
stamina has negative values again, meaning you need to recover from negative before you can perform actions and won't be able to run for even a moment after recovering. However, actions also require much less stamina per to perform, meaning you can roll as many times as you could with max stamina endurance in Dark Souls 1, with only base stamina endurance again <laughs> in Dark Souls 3. Also remember that not wearing even one piece of armor in any slot will lower your flat defense and that a lot of rings get nerfed in PvP and don't tell you. Most notably the Ring of Steel Protection, the Elemental Defense ones, and the Scorpion Clutch Rings.